right. We alive. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Everything's good. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. Morning fellowship. This is the day that the Lord has made and Let's rejoice and be glad in this day because, um, oh, quite frankly, um, oh, quite frankly, the Lord has chose to wake us up to see another day, you know, and for that we need to give him an applause, we need to thank him and just give glory to his name. Um, I'm the facilitator, Minister Gray, and as usual, we always have our technical foolishness going on, but that's okay. You know, the Word of God says that His Word would not return back to Him void, that it was set out to accomplish whatever purpose it has set out for. Amen. So, um, without further ado, first of all, I want to thank everybody for your prayers. You know, um, still in the in the healing. Um, situation still in God is still in the healing business and um, not almost completely there but I'm almost where I need to be so you know word of God again says you know the fervent prayer of a righteous one availeth much so um, let's, let's just be thankful you know that you know God is still healing and um, just a program reminder, um, this will be rebroadcast on YouTube in its entirety later on today. So if, um, if you're unable to see it live today, you can always view it later on, you know, when you get an opportunity. So let your friends know, your in-laws, your outlaws, your frenemies, and anybody that you know, let them know that we can watch this on Facebook Live. I mean, I'm sorry, on YouTube Live. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, man. God is still good, man. Let's pray. Let's look to the Lord. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, Father God, we come to you this morning. Give an honor, give it the glory, and give you the praise. Because you're worthy to be praised, Lord. You're the great I am, Father God. You're the Lord of Lords. You're the King of Kings, Father God. We pray to you this morning, dear God. Just forgive us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for acting out of character or even acting in character, but our character is not in you, Lord God. Forgive us for those times, Lord God, that we're supposed to do things that we're supposed to do and didn't, or said something that we're supposed to say and didn't, or thought what we're supposed to have been thinking and didn't. Pray that you help us to get better, Lord God. You're a merciful God, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for another day of blessing and another day of grace and hope. Thank you for just being the God that you are, man. You said, Lord, that you reign on the just and even on the unjust, Lord God. That you even bless those that don't even know you, Lord God, so they can come to know you, Lord. That's that's real, that's heavy, and that's a good thing, Lord. And, Lord, just thank you so much for being the God that you are. And just pray, Lord God, that as your word go forth, Lord God, that it will not return back to you void, Lord God. We live in an age, Lord God, that everything's you know, technical, and we thank you, Lord, for these resources that's available, you know, that your word can go forth, Lord. But I pray, Lord God, that even if the technology don't work, Lord God, that somehow, some way, people will still reach you, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that um, somebody will give their life to you today, Lord God. And as the word that you just given me, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you just help us, Lord, to learn to, to trust you, Lord God, because for a lot of us, Lord, trust is not an easy word, you know, to define. It's not an easy way to live out. So I pray, Lord God, that you'll 
Fill me with your spirit, Lord God. I study, Lord God. I just need your spirit to fulfill your purpose. I prepared as best I could, Lord God, but I need your power to put it out there. I pray nothing will hinder or or distract or bring any um any issues between your word and your listeners today, Lord God. Have your word, have your way, Lord God. And we be able to capital describe to you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that you do to you and you alone. In the mighty matchless name of Lord Jesus Christ, our prayer says amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, again, thank y'all for y'all prayers, man. It's been been difficult man but God is still good man you know usually when prayers go up you know grace and mercy follows so um very appreciative of your prayers so let's let's get started man the topic that I actually put into the scripture I mean put into the word for the day is in God we trust. Man, that's a lot going on with that, man. So let's go over the word of God and know what, what it says about trusting in the Lord. We're going into Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. And the word of God reads, and I'm reading read now the New Living Translation for anybody that's interested. And the word of God reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. First of all, I'd like to um, thank my daughter, man. I think thank my daughter, Alexis, for actually, we had this conversation Actually, two weeks ago, we were talking about something dealing with money and dealing with all kinds of stuff, man. And all of a sudden, she brought up the word trust. And then she said, she asked me this question. Why does that word trust written on a dollar bill? And I said, wait a minute. That's an interesting concept. And I asked the Lord to help me to see that, man. And as I was preparing for this surgery... I learned a valuable lesson about trust, man. And um, trust for us is not an easy thing, man. Let's just be real. You know, as we look at these verses, the overall question is, do we really trust God? I mean, let's, 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 let's look at it, man. You know, do we really trust God when the going gets tough? Do we really trust God when all else fails? Do we really put our trust in God when we have nothing else left? You know, that's the question. You know, God giving us these abilities to create and to think and to process things. But do at the end of the day, do we really, really trust God? You no. Know, we have to wonder what the founding fathers must have been thinking at the time when they before they even put this on the dollar bill or on that currency. It's so important in trusting God back even in them days that it's printed nearly on every dollar bill today, y'all. See, trusting God is the foundational truth for the gospel. God has given me an assignment, and my assignment is to, you know, for the day is to help us to see that trusting God is as essential as breathing. And, and, and... And yeah, I, I, I chose to accept this challenge because I quite frankly um, learned to still trust God and all that he's doing in my life, you know, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, you know. My assignment is just to help us to see that Trusting God is as essential as breathing. I accepted the assignment. This ain't like Mission Impossible. This is this thing ain't gonna blow up, man. You know, God is awesome and He knows what's best for us. 
you know, trusting God, you know, it's part of our survival kit, you know, for, for believers in Christ, we need to trust God to survive, man. If we're to survive the enemy's missile attacks, if we to survive the world's constant bombardment and movement of the value system, and even in our own mess, you know, trusting God is vital, amen? First of all, let's look at that word trust. T-R-U-S-T, -T, trust. That's a word packed with a whole lot, man. What does it mean to trust somebody? What does it mean to trust? Let me just stop right there and just get, you know, let's think about that for a minute. You know, how am I going to trust if I have my light scary turn off? How am I going to trust, man, if I'm looking around my shoulder every five minutes not knowing who's going to attack me? You know, yeah, God did say that he's the rose of Sharon. God did say he's the wheel in the middle of a wheel. Amen. God said that he's the bomb of Gilead, y'all. Amen. But let's be honest. Let's just, let's just be honest with ourselves and be real. Can we really trust God when there is no bomb and I can't find Gilead, huh? Can we really trust God if you're in the wheel and the spoke's broken up? Amen. Can I really trust God, you know, if I can't find a Sharon, least of all a rose? Come on, somebody. Help me out here. How can I put my trust in someone that I cannot see? As I've just learned this past week, y'all, before this surgery even took place, I was having all kinds of fits. Y'all, y'all, come on, y'all know what I mean by fits. Come on now. Fits is a sense, is another word of saying, what if? What if is this going to happen? What if that's going to happen? You know, what if, what if, what if? You know, having panic attacks, man. You know, when I knew that God said that he would need, neither leave me or forsake me. Come on, y'all know what I'm saying here. You know, God said that, you know, he'll see us through to the end. You know, I'm sure that I'm not the only one that's, that's gone through that and still going through that kind of thinking. Look at what God said in the word that we just read. Proverbs chapter 3, verse one, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. New King James, the King James says, Do not lean on your own understanding. Verse 6, Seek his, his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. King James would say, You know, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. Come on now. Let's think about that for a minute. A lot of times we tend to trust in our own abilities and our own ingenuity to help us. But how many here know that that won't carry us? But so far, everybody, come on, somebody, you know, he ain't gonna be. Able to, we can't do but so much. We've got very limited thinking. You know, we're not God. We got we don't have infinite wisdom. He has all wisdom in his own his own thinking, y'all. Come on. We only can go but so far. You see what I'm saying? You know, my own abilities and my own ingenuity only going to get me from point A to point B. What happens from C to Z? Can anybody answer that? What happens from C to Z? It's a mystery. And the only way you're going to know the mystery is that we got to learn to trust the one that knows every mystery. Come on, somebody. Y'all got to help me out here. Sometimes life or even our own choices will have us in situations where our trust will either have us looking up or looking down. Can I get a witness? I know I got some witnesses sitting out there. Check this out, y'all. Even in a relationship, and that's another thing about trust. It's all about relational, y'all. It's, it's, it's not just circumstantial. It's relational. Check this out. In a relationship, we have we have to kind of come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm get where I'm going to go at. We kind of have to feel that person out. Well, before we start giving them our whole biological and psychological profiles, y'all know what I'm saying. In other words, 
it takes a while, man. It, it's not easy. It is not easy to to get involved in a relationship without having some sort of trust, you know. And, and see, one thing about the Lord, you know, how y'all just got to help me out here. One great thing about God is that he already knows our makeup. He already knows who we are. He already know that we some fragile, fragile people. No matter how tough we try to be, man. I know all y'all tough Tonys and tough Tanyas out there trying to put on this brave look. But knowing inside, man, let's, let's be real. We're just like the lion on a Wizard of Oz. And look, y'all, there's nothing wrong with that. The only problem with that is that if we don't know Christ, that's how we're going to always be. But when we get to know Christ, man, we won't no longer be like the lion on a Wizard of Oz. Because he's given us to have to, he's given us power to conquer all those things. But we gotta learn to trust him. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. In other words, God is trying to reach us through that big four-letter word, you know, and it's called L O V E. Oh, look, I'm doing three. It's supposed to be four. L O V E. Somebody say L O V E. What does that spell? L O V E. Love. Y'all know what I'm saying about that love thing. Yep. The old whisper song. It's a love thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's trying to get us to trust us through love, man. You know, and even for some of us, love is even as difficult as it is trusting somebody. See, if we just trust God during the sunny days and we don't trust him when it rains or storms show up, then that's not real trust, y'all. That's that superficial trust, man. You know, God said not to put our confidence. Oh, let me go back. Did I go back? Let me go back and explain to y'all what trust is. Let me go back to that. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to make sure I explain what that is. Trust, again, is the biblical definition, meaning the place confidence in or to rely on, man. That's what trust is. And a lot of times we put trust in self. We may, for some strange reason, put trust in Mary Lou and Betty Boo and Brother Joe and Brother Leroy. But sometimes, man, that's just not going to work all the time. You know? If we again put our trust in, in God on the sunny days and not trust Him when it rains and when it storms and the hurricanes show up, that's not real trust. That's just superficial, y'all. God said not to put our confidence or trust in flesh or man. I mean, he know that man will let us down even if the person means well. And we got some good, well-natured folk out there that probably really, really means well. But look, we live in these bodies racked with sin, y'all. We live in a world around us that's chaotic with sin, y'all. And what happens in, in that situation, in and out of itself, we don't trust nobody. Come on. We just don't. So again, how can we put a trust in, in somebody that we can't see? You know? That's just how the nature, that's the nature of who we are. We untrust in folk. But God, even though we can't see him. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, but God, but God, even though we can't see him. But we can see when he comes because he comes through for us. Can I get some hallelujahs out there, y'all? He came through for me when I was reeling up, when they rolled me up out of that, that, that um, surgery room, y'all. And I'm here, sitting here, I'm up, <laughs> preaching the word of God, man. I'm telling you, man, if, 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 if God ain't real to some of y'all, man, I pray that y'all keep on living because eventually y'all going to see that God is real, man. He is real. All the Lord is asking us to do is to take our hearts and let them have it. The word of God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's just not the blood pumping all over your body. Boom, 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 boom. You know what the heart means? The heart means this is the seat of all our emotions and our basic, our will. Okay, the third step in Alcotic Anonymous says, 
that I've turned my life and my will over to God as I understand Him. I turn my will over to a God that has helped me from drug addiction. I turn my will to a God that showed me that there's life beyond all that. That's what He's saying. We all got wills. Everybody in 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 the planet that's living and breathing has a will. Okay, I, I I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to do that. That's we we put out our own selves in a position to create our own will. But God's saying no. What I want because usually when we do our own thing, which is our own will, we mess it up. Ninety nine point nine. Plus one equals a hundred percent of the time. Can I get a witness to that as well? You know, all God is saying is that if you just learn to just trust me with your whole heart, your whole will, your whole emotions, man. We got damaged people that's got damaged emotions out there. If we just give those emotions to the Lord, man, and let Him handle those emotions, man, you'll see that we'll be better off. Afterwards, then how much better than we was before? You know, we would we we have went on our own thinking way too long, don't you think? Oh man, somebody probably still thinking the same way they thinking. But keep on living. You'll see later on, as the old folks say, by and by, you will we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. He wants us to seek him for everything in life. Seek his will in all you do. Verse six in Proverbs chapter three. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. You understand what I'm saying? New hope, new beginnings, better health. And I, yeah, come on, I, yeah, come on. I hear somebody out there talking about a new car, a new house, new set of clothes. Uh, look, God will give us what we need when we need it, okay? Only if we can just put our trust in him. You know, he, look, he will show us. The pathway to obtain all those wonderful things that we ask for. And there's nothing wrong with those things in and out of itself. But we got to seek God's will in order to obtain those things. We're not going to, look, we start seeking all these nice things on our own. It's not going to last long. Let me tell you something. If we, if we obtain all this wealth and materialistic things, it's not going to last long if we don't have Christ. And if you don't have peace, y'all. And I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. Just hold your horses for a second. Take a sip of coffee and just, just hold on for a minute. Don't, I know some, look. Y'all don't know where to go in life? Go to Jesus, brothers and sisters. He has carved out our paths in life, y'all. Saved and unsaved. You know, look. I say this to those that don't know Christ. The more you ignore him, the harder it will be, y'all. The more we walk in the dark, the harder we will be. Well, Lord have mercy. I got to go back over this again. The more we walk in the dark, the harder it will be to see the light, y'all. Come on, can I get some amens out there? Let him show you the right way to go, man. I remember this, 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 this Jackson 5 song back in the 70s. I'm a 70s kind of person. And the song said, let me show you. Let me show you the way to go. Mike Jack and all his brothers couldn't show me the way to go. Only Jesus Christ can show me the way to go. And he will show you the way to go, man. And that leads me to my ending point, man. I didn't want this to be a long-winded message. I just wanted to get to the point where everybody here that's learning or struggling to trust the Lord, man. Or for somebody that may not even trust God, you know. My final point and all this is simply this, y'all. Peace is the end result of trust. Lord have mercy. Help me out. Let me take a sip of that. Let me. Y'all can take a sip. Again, let me go back to that final point one more time. Peace is the end result of trust. Let me share something with y'all. When I was in the military, right? Out there in the field, man, we have to learn to rely on our buddies and our buddy buddies. We had to rely on or trust in whoever was in the foxhole with us, y'all. I spent many days and many nights in them foxholes, Jack. 
and God has provided some great guys, man. You know, the Gary Hinky, I, I call his name out, man. A whole bunch of others that I was in the military with. You know, God bless him. Max Torres, man. You know, hope, man. God bless him, man. We, 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 we spent countless days in them foxholes, y'all. You know, and then when things got hairy and the mortars start coming, y'all, and we was trained for that kind of thing. We had each other's backs, man. We could take turns resting and sleeping, knowing the other person had our back. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I got to sit back. I'm going to jump up out of this chair. But God said, sit still. Y'all got to be listening to what I'm saying. Y'all got to know where I'm going at with this. God said this, y'all. I'm going to direct your path in life. You know, I got your back, man. I'm... God got us in the foxhole. Anybody going through something right now? God is in the foxhole with you. Anybody think they're going to, you know, fail in health? God is in the foxhole with you. Anybody think that they're going to lose their mind? God is in the foxhole with you. Anybody think that they're going to lose their home, their job, and everything like that? Trust me. God is in the foxhole with you. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. You know? He, he did say he'll never leave us a forsake us, and he won't. You know, he will direct our paths because he's the one that called out our paths. The word of God says that he is the author and finisher of our faith, y'all. Let's just go back to 0 0.1. In order to trust God, it takes faith, y'all. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It takes faith to believe that God is going to carry us through. Man, look, right now in my household, God is still looking over us. He's still taking care of us, man. And I know that there's other households that's lacking. But God said in his word that those that lack, he's going to supply, y'all. Come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. God said this also. I will provide security. I will supply blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. He will provide blessed insurance, y'all. You got to have something to hold on to, y'all, in case something happens. That's your insurance, man. No matter what you go through, y'all. No matter what you're thinking. You know, look, I'm going to add this to it because the Holy Spirit told me to throw this in the mix, y'all. No matter what you're going through in life, for those that know Christ, that those that are believing in Christ, those that are walk, trying their best and struggling, walking with Christ, once you save, you're saved. Don't let the devil tell you that, God forbid, if something happens to me, I'm going down in the pits. No, 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 no. That's a lie from the pits. Once you save, you're saved, y'all. You know, again, that goes back to trusting in the Lord, man. You know, once we learn to trust the Lord, even though we got other problems going on, if we learn to trust the Lord, you know, not every day, look, let's be realistic. Not every day he may not get us out of it, but he'll walk us through it so we can get out of it. Come on, somebody, help me here, you know? In the one word, we all in life is trying to pursue that God will provide P-E-A-C-E, -E, the Jewish word, the Israel word, the, the, the word of God word, shalom. That's peace. That's peace. Not the world's way of peace. There is no peace in a chaotic world, y'all. There's only peace when you get to know Christ. There's only peace when you get to trust Christ, y'all. Oh, yeah, see, so, yeah, look. Somebody doing a Gary Coleman on me. What you talking about, Willis? Not in this world. Yes, in the middle of the chaos that this world brings, there's still peace. And y'all put, yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all look at me like I done lost my mind. And maybe they probably saying it's probably still the anesthesia. Look, y'all, the anesthesia wore off of me. I'm talking Jesus now. Turn with me to Isaiah. Um, oh, I got all worked up, Lord Jesus. Man, it's a good work up, y'all. When you get to know the Lord and you learn to trust the Lord, man, you get worked up too. Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. Lord, have mercy. God is good, man. God is good. Yes, 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 yes. 
and a yes, yes. Man, it brings so much excitement. We should be excited, man. We should be excited about what God is doing in our lives, man. We should be really excited, you know. And again, let me throw in another footnote. This will be back on YouTube Live later on today. So for those that enjoy it, want to hear it again, by all means, help yourself, man. And for those that, you know, tech issues kind of messing things up, it's okay. The devil is a liar. It's okay. Go on YouTube later. And you'll be able to watch it again and share it with other people, man. Because this is a word that we all need to hear in these troubling times, man. We need to hear something from the Lord that will give us hope. You know, trusting in God will give us hope and peace. Let's get to that peace part. Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. And I'm reading again out of New Living Translation. You know, um... King James had the same thing, but it's worded differently. But trust me, the word is still the word. Let me read what it says here in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. And we're talking about the Lord. We ain't talking about us here. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Verse 4, trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. Come on. Can nobody move a rock like God can? Can I get a witness to somebody out here? Come on, man. He's the rock of ages, man. He's the rock of all rocks, man. Forget Dwayne Johnson. We got Jesus, man. You know, he's our eternal rock, man. Come on, man. He said he will keep us in per perfect peace, y'all. Come on now. How can you live in perfect peace in a chaotic world? No Christ. Come on now. Oh, I'm going to get to that. Come on. Come on, come on, yeah. Y'all see that this his peace becomes our peace. And I know that someone out there is easily saying or feeling like, I don't feel no peace, and I certainly don't know no peace. Allow me to be of some godly assistance to those that don't know Christ, for those that are struggling with knowing Christ. Let me break it down the way God told me to break it down. No Christ, no peace. Wait a minute, let me, ooh, 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 ooh. let me start over. Get excited here. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. Let me break it down. Y'all probably y'all doing a Scooby Doo on me, huh? Okay, here we go. K O N O W, no Jesus. K N O W, no peace. N O Jesus, N O peace. You won't have peace if you don't know Jesus. All right, let me break it down in layman's terms. All right, if you don't know Jesus, you're not going to have no peace, y'all. God gives every human heart the desire for peace. Don't, live it. don't let that devil play tricks, man. Don't let that flesh start acting stupid and saying, look, you ain't going to have no peace. That's a lie, y'all. God gives every human heart the desire for peace. Unfortunately, we live in a body racked with sin. And sometimes, and a lot of times, and most times, sin disrupts peace, y'all. You know, if you're having problems on the job and you're not at peace, you, you might want to check the sin thermometer in your heart, man, and see what's going on there. It's going to need some Jesus adjustments, man. Come on, y'all. You're having problems in your home, okay? Check out that sin thermometer in your heart, man, and let Jesus take care of that, you know. Not at peace because health is failing. Check out what's going on in your heart, man, and know that Jesus is going to take care of you. Come on, somebody. Don't let the devil trick you in thinking that there is no peace. Peace is available to anybody that calls and cries out the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, man. So unfortunately, the world has a different kind of peace. The world only has a temporary kind of peace. Peace not going to last through the world's eyes, y'all. Everlasting peace comes with having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, man. Oh, man, I'm going to get into something real good for y'all, man. Already this stuff is already good. And I hope that y'all, mm, I just hope y'all getting some of this while y'all eating your breakfast, man. This is a good vitamin. This is vitamin B, D, C, and E, man. Come on, y'all. 
Peace is available to, available to all who comes to Jesus with everything. You know, not no, you know, we got a, we got a little plate that we got in our house, you know, special plate for a special person. Like, well, God bless her. It's like a, it's like a four, it's like the kind of place that you put uh, different things in different sections. Y'all know what I'm talking about, one of them sectional plates, all right? Don't let your life be like a sectional plate. You know, you're giving God this section, but you're holding out the other section as an ace card in case that section don't work out, man. That section that you're holding on to is never going to work out until you get right with the section that's going to work out. Come on now. Y'all know where I'm going at with this. You don't want to give them a half. Give them all. Give them all, man. You know, not a little here and a little there. That's not a relationship, y'all. That's a casual one-night stand. And I know some of y'all know what I mean by one-night stand, y'all. Come on, let's be realistic out here. He just said it. He just said it in his word, folks. He will keep us in perfect, per Lord, perfect peace. When all hell's going around and I'm at peace. When I was at the Helping Up Mission years ago, man, there was no peace in that joint. Let me tell you. And I, you know, look, everybody go there for different reasons in their, in their whatever journey, you know. But let me tell you something. For those brothers, including myself that was there, it was just something about that peace that God gave us, you know, in the midst of all that chaos that was going on there. Because our mind, Lord Jesus, our minds was fixed on him. Well, all we was trying to do was get to learn more about this God that got us from all that mess that we was doing. And I'm sure somebody's still in that mess out here, y'all. And y'all trying to figure out how to get out of it. Go to Jesus with it. Don't try to figure it out. God already done worked it out, y'all. If we just get our thoughts, keep our thoughts out of all that stuff that, that, that we shouldn't even be thinking. What if? You understand what I'm saying? And it's normal to go through the what ifs. But don't let it stay there. You know what I'm saying? Don't keep going through all that, you know, what if this going to happen, what is going to happen? Because you're going to get sick, y'all. You're going to get so anxiety-ridden that you're not going to be able to do anything. Because you're too, you're, you're too numb. You know what I'm saying? Too paved up. You know? Let our thoughts be fixed on the one that already knows what we're thinking about, y'all. He understands, you know? So much so that he's trying to tell us not to lean on our own understanding. And all our ways, acknowledge him. Lord, I acknowledge you as my God. I'm struggling with trying to walk the walk, but I still acknowledge you as my God. Help me to get through all these things that I'm going through. Come on, y'all. If y'all say that in your heart, God already knows what's in your heart, man. He'll help you. Come on, y'all. Lord Jesus, man. The word of God said, Lean down our own understanding. But all our ways acknowledge him and he'll direct our paths. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. All who trust in him, all whose thoughts are fixed on us, he will give us that perfect peace. The peace that's beyond our understanding. I don't understand why I'm at peace, but I'm at peace. Why I don't understand why I'm at peace? Because God gave me that peace. Come on, y'all. Man. Oh, Jesus, let me wind myself down now. I'm all wound up. I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm settling down the plane, get ready to land now. Woo! Blessed is he who believes yet not see. That's what God said. God said, blessed is he who believes yet not see, man. What an awesome God. Man, man we should be giving praises. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We should be giving praises to him right now that we're still in our right mind. You know, I came out that surgery thanking God, thanking the same God who I don't see, yet he's taking care of me right now as I'm sitting here speaking to y'all. You know, I don't have everything, but he is my everything. Come on, somebody can be lit with what I'm saying. Come on. He's taking care of me and my family, and I can guarantee, I can guarantee. Let me do it. My, my, my main man, Don Cornelius, you bet your bottom dollar that he's going to take care of you too, man. He will. Just just trust him, y'all. 
You didn't trust it enough in your own ability. How far did it get you? And quite frankly, how far is it going to take you, man? You know? Let them take care of you. Let them, let them, let them handle what it is that you cannot handle, y'all. I would like to end with this thought, y'all. Our founding fathers, you know, George Washington and, and, and Ben Franklin and all them cats, y'all. They believed that God would get them through British tyranny. And thus the United States was born. Y'all know y'all history. Y'all know where the United States came from. If we for once just take a look at our lives and ask the question, how I got my bills paid? Why is it I'm not sitting in a house full of candles right now? Huh? My health may not be where it should be, but I thank God for the reasonable portion that I do have. Huh? Okay. Now that I'm not looking in the refrigerator, there's nothing but baking soda in there, huh? Come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all know what I'm y'all know where I'm driving at. Yeah, I'm in the car driving, but y'all know where I'm driving at. Why is it that I'm still here and I'm not dead, huh? How did bad relationships become better? So on and so on, y'all know this. Y'all know where I'm driving at here. You know, at the end of the day, we'll realize that it all wasn't our wisdom. It was God, y'all. It was through the Lord Jesus Christ that made this possible. So let us simply come to our senses, because we are we all sensible folk. We may be some sinful, wrapped up people, and that's I know y'all looking at me saying, Who you call a sinner? You are. I am. We all are. So stop the foolishness. We are sinful people. But God has a remedy for all that, and I'm gonna get to the remedy in a second. You know, and we just come to our senses because we are sensible folk when we want to be and recognize that it was God that provided, that it was God that did all this. And we just simply say in our mouths and our heart, in God we do trust. Amen, amen, amen. Let's get a hand clap of praise to the Lord that has got us through, man. I would like to finish with this, y'all. I'm already done my preaching, but I could never, never end without giving this personal invitation to somebody that listened to this broadcast and don't have the Lord in their life, man. That's a terrible thing, man, to listen to the Word of God and not heed the prompt of the Holy Spirit knocking on the doors of your heart. If you notice on some of these pictures, man, you'll notice that there's an open door. And there is a door, but there's no, no doorknob or lock on the door. Because of the two-way conversation between you and the Lord. It's personal. Okay? I just read it to y'all. Blessed is he who believes but yet not see. There may be somebody here that don't notice Jesus that we we so much cherish and we so much struggling to know more of, but we love them to the hills and back. There may be somebody here that that, that that might be saying in their heart, man, I don't know which way to go. Go to Christ. Religion can't save y'all, man. Religion, if anything, will get you more frustrated than you were before you got to know Jesus Christ. It's not about religion, man. It's about having a relationship with this God that woke us up every morning. That seed to our every need. Saved and unsaved. He wants the unsaved to get to know him so they can be saved. Because the days and times we're living in, man, it's gonna be it's gonna get rough and tough in that foxhole. And he said he's gonna he's gonna be there for us. If we don't give your life to Christ, man, it's only gonna be you in that foxhole, you're not gonna make it. Why don't you just simply just say this honestly in your heart, Jesus, I know I, I know I need you. All you got to simply say in your heart is this. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I need you to save me because I can't save my own self. I'm in this box so all by myself. You said you'd never leave me or forsake me, but for some reason I just don't trust you. Help me to trust you. I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord. 
And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead with all power in your hand. Change my life. Rearrange my life. Make me whole again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And I pray that you help me to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If somebody said that for the very first time, hallelujah, welcome to the family, you know, your, your, your heavens, your home, when all this is said and done, thank God that hell is not your home. For those that don't, that's still struggling with Jesus, God said that he never leave us or forsake us, man. And those that are believers, that's like, like myself at times are struggling, God is still there for us. All I say for those that just gave their life to Christ, just inbox me. It's, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of when you give your life to Christ. You know, you're no longer serving Satan anymore. You're serving Christ now. All right? You know, find you a strong Bible-believing church that you can be under a, 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 a pastor that's preaching and teaching that word like he's supposed to and be under, you know, fellowship with other believers that has the same belief system as you're learning to believe that Jesus is Christ and that the word of God is the is is the is the real deal. Thank you all for being on this line and again it will be on, on YouTube later. We're gonna we're gonna end in a word of prayer. I pray that y'all be blessed and enjoy y'all day and um let's just look to the Lord and end. Thank you Father Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I've given it all i got, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that listening ears did hear your word. I pray for those, Lord God, that gave their life to you today, Lord God. For your word said that you'll never snatch them from out of your hand. That nothing and no one will never snatch them from out of your hand. That even the hairs on their hand, heads are numbered by you. I pray that you'll show them the way. Show them the way, Lord God. For you said you are the way, the truth, and the life. I pray, Lord God, that you'll help them, Lord, find a believing church, Lord God, and just open up doors, Lord God, for them. I pray for those of us, Lord God, that's still struggling in our walk, that really want to trust you, but somehow or another we still have trust issues. I pray, Lord God, that you'll help us through that and let us know, Lord God, that you said that you'll never leave us or abandon us. And Lord, as we learned in the military, that you, we never leave a, we have never leave a wounded behind. For those that are wounded, Lord God, because of trust issues, I pray that you'll, you'll heal them and that you'll just put them over your shoulder and just take care of us, Lord God, as you know, as I know, and some of us know that you can. Because you're able to, Lord, and I'm going to attest to that. I'm going to testimony to that. For those that didn't give their life to Christ today, that listen, Lord God, and for some reason or another, they just either uh, either fearful or for some reason they didn't. I just pray, Lord, as I just said, and you told me, there's no peace without Christ. No peace, no Jesus. Let them have no peace and toss and turn until they have peace with you, Lord God. Help us to carry on, Lord God, with your grace and your mercy throughout the course of the day, course of the week. You know, I pray your blessings on my co-workers and my family and those that are on Facebook and YouTube, Lord God. Help us all to learn to trust you one day at a time, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord, as we leave this, this form that we never leave your presence, Lord God. Have your word, have your way, Lord God. And Lord... I pray, Lord God, as we view Thanksgiving, now that it's over, Lord, help us always have Thanksgiving in our hearts. And as we pray, prepare for Christmas, let us be mindful, Lord God, that it's about Christ and not just the M-A-S, Lord God. Let your will be done in our lives, through us and around us and in us. And we ever, ever, ever capital ascribe to you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise is due to you. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for being understanding, even when we don't trust you like we should. We love you, and we bless you, and we thank you for everything. In the mighty matches, name Lord Jesus Christ, our prayer says amen and amen. God bless y'all. Y'all have a blessed week in the Lord. And may the heavens 
smile upon you. Peace.